First, I'd like to thank the Star News for organizing this tonight. And uh, I'd like to, th I've actually a number of thank yous. I'd like to thank the PUSD and Marshall for hosting us. I'd like to thank my granddaughter Annabella's teacher for here at Marshall for offering credit, extra credit to students who attend here tonight. Um, and mostly I'd like to thank all of you for being willing to show up and, and listen to us tonight. I think uh, the references to the flag and all that uh, are very pertinent. And people talk about turnout and suggest that people aren't interested in, in what happens in local government. The evidence here tonight and what we've seen at the other forums uh, suggests that that's simply not true. Uh, I've been walking our city for over a year to hear what people have to say about Pasadena and what I've learned uh, is that people all over the city uh, care a great deal about Pasadena but they know that we can do better. We're facing a lot of challenges that was referenced already, uh, many of them financial and I'm sure that that our panelists are going to be questioning us about that tonight, so I don't have to anticipate that. My educational background in, uh, in government and planning, my work experience as planning director in Pasadena, uh, as a private businessman working throughout Southern California, my volunteer experience on the planning commission, and as a board member of several nonprofits that produce affordable housing, and my elected service on the city council where I serve as chair of the finance committee, I hope have prepared me to help you uh, tackle and overcome some of these challenges. Uh, maybe we'll find out tonight. Um, I hope that you'll agree and that you'll cast your votes for me on April 21st. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Robinson. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I, too, would like to thank the Pasadena Star News, as well as um, all of you here in the room tonight, and the Pasadena Unified School District for hosting tonight's forum. My name is Jackie Robinson. I am the current vice mayor for the city of Pasadena, and I've been a member of the city council for the last eight years. I also forgot to add that this Jackie Robinson is from Pasadena, too. <laughs> and Van Halen actually went to Mir, of which I'm an alumni. Um, as well. Um, the reason that I'm running for mayor is because I want Pasadena to be the most progressive and innovative city in this country. And I believe that my service for the last eight years in District 1, combined with my personal experience of being born and raised here in Pasadena, has adequately, has adequately prepared me to be your next mayor. Um, and I say that because District 1 is a microcosm of this city. We have multiple different, very different levels of socioeconomic status in District 1, from the wealthy to the working middle class to those that are in, in um, much need of assistance, both from the city and other agencies. We also have the largest amount of public, public open space in District 1. And our district is very diverse, not unlike Pasadena. And in fact, some of our districts here in the city are very homogeneous. I believe that being able to work successfully in District 1 has prepared me to be mayor. And I'm proud to have the support of organizations and individuals like the National Women's Political Caucus of Greater Pasadena, the Los Angeles County Democratic Party, as well as the Pasadena police officers. I believe it's going to be imperative that our next mayor is a collaborator that's able to work not just with our colleagues on the city council, but with all of you um, here in the city to work towards resolving some of our most pressing issues that we'll both be expressing our views on here tonight. So I ask all of you respectfully and humbly for your vote on April 21st. Thank you. Well, I think it says that the city council needs to play a greater, <coughs> excuse me, a, a great, greater, greater role into the day-to-day -day, um, role of um, city hall, um, recognizing that we are a city manager-run city, and so the city manager is the administrator. But um, as mayor, I would take a greater role in ensuring that we have the mechanisms in place in all, across all departments, not just the finance department and public works department, which is where this particular instance, instance took place. Um, this is something that I think about every day. Um, and I think about it because I hear it amongst, you know, talk of employees at City Hall. I hear it in the community. And it's something that I was actually very um, both disappointed to hear and angry at because the public um, trusts um, City Hall 
to be um, safe keepers of your precious tax resources, and it's a disappointment that a city employee would um, break the public trust and even break the trust of um, those of us at a city hall that are working in a very honest way to give all of you the world-class services that we expect and deserve here in city hall. Um, I'm, as mayor, I'm committed to continuing to um, work with our citizen task force that was just recently appointed to help us work through some of these issues related to um, resolving how the embezzlement happened, but more importantly, um, how to make sure that it never happens again. And um, as mayor, I look forward to continuing to make sure that we have the necessary protocols in place um, to be able to make sure that this doesn't happen again. And Vice Mayor. Oh. Me. Vice Mayor, when did you first know, when did you have your first inkling um, through official channels or back channels that uh, this was going on? Well, it is true that the City Council was brief, not on specifics, um, I would say approximately, possibly maybe six months prior to the public information being released, but even then it, it was brief, it was not in specific detail, we did not know the extent of um, the information that uh, that the suspect was eventually going to be charged with. So I, speaking as one council member, can say that I was honestly very surprised and disappointed and angry at the extent to which, and the, both the length of time and the amount of dollars um, that were stolen from the city. Thank you. Um, Terry, same question. I think that the, uh, the embezzlement scandal is a symptom of a, a larger problem. I, th I think uh, what we suffer from in, in City Hall, and I say this uh, with all respect for city employees as a, as a former city employee, um, I think we had a lot of people that were taking their eye off the ball. And I think that some very basic sort of um, accounting 101 procedures were ignored. And I think the reason I think it's symptomatic of a larger problem is because what we've suffered from, I think, is a lack of accountability um, in the city. So that if people don't uh, follow the rules, if they don't do their jobs properly, there haven't been any real consequences. And I think when that happens over and over again, uh, it opens the door for a crook, which, which is what we had here, who was able to exploit a particular wrinkle in, the, uh, in, this, in this account to exploit the system. And I'm not sure which is which is more appalling, whether it's the amount of the money, the, you know, the $6.4 million total, uh, which, of which I believe most will be recaptured through insurance. But I think even more appalling is the term of the theft, the fact that there were so many different people that had passed through these departments as department heads, as city managers, as city council people, uh, and yet this individual who came to work uh, in 2003 by 2000, 2004 was stealing. And so uh, we need to take a long, hard look at our procedures and our attitudes and make sure that um, we can assure the public that we are taking their, their money seriously and doing a good job with the, with the scarce resources that we have. And in terms of the timing, um, I think uh, the Vice Mayor's schedule is about right. Sometime in the, in the summer, uh, we had an initial briefing about without any specifics about dollar amounts uh, uh, or duration, uh, that there might be something afoot. So that's right. Pardon me, that's what my follow-up is for Councilman Tornick. Um, uh, so how, could, how is it that a numbers guy such as yourself could have sat on key committees that were overseeing the utility and not um, be, be able to see such a large chunk of change going out the door over 11 years. No, I think, uh, you not know, that I, you were there for 11, but how, how did you miss it? You're a numbers guy. No, that, that question uh, sort of betrays a, a, a fundamental misunderstanding of what, how the system works. I mean, this is not a situation like some small town where the council votes on every single expenditure and reviews every, every bill that comes in. They're, it's just too big a budget. It's a, you know, this is a $600 million enterprise. So the council's role in the city manager form of government is to uh, establish policy and hire the city manager um, and not, as one of the candidates suggested earlier in this, in this uh, competition, walk between the desks and look over people's shoulders. That's the reason that the government is set up the way it is is because the, the conclusion 
of the good government people in the, in the early 20th century or in the late 19th century is that we need to keep the elected officials out of walking through the desks and dispensing patronage and, and, uh, and doing other nasty things and leave it to the professionals. So to ask a question like that suggests that somehow we miss the boat and it misrepresents, I think, exactly what the role of the elected officials is vis-a-vis uh, -vis what the role of the, the professional staff is. Uh, I think I'm, I'm a little bit troubled by the way the question is phrased in the sense that I'm not sure how pervasive the distrust of the department is uh, throughout the community. I mean, I, I, I've, I have direct uh, experience in walking in all parts of the city and frankly, I think in most of the city it's, a, it's not an accurate representation to say that they mistrust the police department. I do agree that um, there are parts of the city uh, where there is a very serious concern. And any time we wind up with a shooting um, and a dead kid, uh, clearly we all have to take it very seriously. And I think that this, uh, this whole um, independent investigation, which um, should have done a lot to expose whatever failures there might have been in the process um, and do it swiftly, uh, has been a debacle. And I think that it was mismanaged uh, in terms of how the fundamental structure of the investigation was initiated. To create, to, to have, I mean, the, the right step was made. The city manager and the mayor uh, stepped up and said, we're going to have an independent investigation, which I think was an appropriate move, by a respected uh, outside agency. And we will release, both the manager and the mayor said that we will release all those results to the public uh, as quickly as possible. And the expectation was then, on the part of the community, that that, in fact, is what would happen. And it didn't happen. Um, and I, I, as I look back, and, and I've never been able to read the report. I mean, it's not like I've seen the report either. Um, so I think that the way that the investigation was structured uh, was faulty from the outset, because it was structured in a way that created an opportunity for the patrol union, in an effort to safeguard its, its members' rights, uh, to thwart release of the report, and that's been a catastrophe from everybody's point of view, including, I think, the police officer's point of view. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, <clears throat> Absolutely. Uh, no. Hello, can everyone hear me? So, absolutely. The shooting of Kendrick McDade is a tragedy and one that I can identify with and am compassionate towards uh, Ms. Slaughter, his mother, um, and all of the family members involved. And I personally express my condolences to the family. And in fact, being in contact with the family of not just officer-involved shootings, but pretty much every shooting in this city since I've been a member of the city council, I've had to, I, I made the personal decision of going and speaking with the family, even when it involved the city. And that's a difficult thing to do, but that's one of the things that I believe council members and the mayor um, is going to have to be responsible for. Um, being mayor is not going to be 100% of the time rose parade and smiles and pictures. It's often leadership in these difficult times, and I believe that both as council member for District 1, where in 2007 the majority of the shootings that took place in the city were in District 1, and also even now as we're dealing with the aftermath of both the barn shooting and the um, McDade shooting, that the mayor is going to have to take an active role in healing the community. Um, I agree that there, well, I disagree that there is um, rampant um, distrust of the Pasadena Police Department. I believe we have a fine police department, and that's evidenced by some of the 